trilateralist team. In fact, on Bush's transition team, Baby Bush had nine out of ten of his advisors from the Council on Foreign Relations. The sole exception, Richard Armitage, who head of drug operations out of Southeast Asia for the Central Intelligence Agency. Richard Armitage has had heavy connections to both Bush administrations. Get ready to go with me on a riveting ride down the Heroin Highway from Burma to Bush. The film Air America reveals how George Bush's CIA dealt in heroin during the Vietnam War. President Reagan has appointed Vice President Bush as the number one policeman for controlling narcotic in the United States. Colonel James, Rambo Greitz, was the most highly decorated Green Beret hero in the Vietnam War. Bo's search for POWs and MIAs took him into the heart of the Golden Triangle. So I ask the White House aide, what about the uh, offer from General Kunza to cooperate with the United States in reducing the narcotics and controlling the amount coming through this area. You're about to hear from Colonel James Bo Greitz that the Bush boys had no interest in solving the drug problem. None whatsoever. The aid was very slow to answer. He said to me, Colonel Bo, there is no interest here in that matter. I know that the American CIA used opium and heroin to finance many of the operations in Laos and in Cambodia. They financed the war using opium and heroin. And uh, after the Vietnam War, Richard Armitage was, uh, was a prominent narcotic personnel, I mean, prominent uh, trafficker in Bangkok. In Bangkok? Yeah, after the Vietnam War. And this uh, finan finance was being uh, controlled, I mean, the finance support was controlled or uh, given by Richard Armitage to settle or uh, who stay in uh, Vietnam. Richard Armitage was George Bush's key man, trafficking in heroin out of Southeast Asia between 75 and 79. The National Guard would work with FEMA to become a national police. A Gestapo in your country, with your acceptance, under the guidance of baby Bush. <laughs> Do you really think that this man has the capacity to lead? Or is he simply following orders? Orders from the Faustian financial fraternity that controls this country. Now, people will tell you, senators and congressmen will tell you not to worry. This bill just deals with foreigners. It's an anti-abuse of the immigration code bill, and it's calculated to get people like the Palestine Liberation Organization terrorists or the IRA out of our country. Don't believe it. The language of the bill is deviously clever. But this court sits, and it's never been used. If a foreign national was arrested, picked up, came in here on, on any charges, he could be taken before this secret court. And I don't even like the sound of that. That kind of sends a chill up my spine. The bill was so repulsive on its face that the man assigned the task of introducing it, Senator Biden, gagged as he introduced it and said in the congressional record that the bill, he was doing it because the president commanded him to do it but that he was severely troubled by the bill because of the use of secret tribunals and the loss of liberty that it represented. The UN Secretary General, Kofi Annan, who is being described in some newspapers as a man of peace, he and the United Nations want an international pro criminal court not to prosecute the communists, not the Chinese communists, 
but instead an international criminal court that could go after people like us. An international criminal court that could imprison Americans in foreign jails and put us on trial for judges from communist China, Iraq, Libya, North Korea. This is the plan. And the charges against us could include genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity, even the crime of aggression, whatever that may mean. Certainly those who had prior knowledge about the World Trade Center attack would be guilty of murder if they didn't act upon it. Did baby Bush and his administrators from the Council on Foreign Relations know that this is going to happen? Evidence supports that. It's all over the place. We have in excess of 200 stories on our website, Free World Alliance, supporting this thesis. But do you hear it on the major managed media? No, you hear a call for a war. People are saying we've got to go out and get those bastards. We've got to level them. But there's no trial. There's no evidence. There's a conviction by the President of the United States, just like there was a conviction by the President of Germany, the Fuhrer of Germany. As it was under Adolf Hitler, so it shall be under George Bush. But Kofi Annan, the man of peace, and the UN don't want to prosecute them. No. They want to prosecute Americans for war crimes. We are on a fast track right now to the establishment of what I consider to be the most dangerous global institution we have ever witnessed or conceived, the International Criminal Court. President Clinton is strongly pushing it. What this bill does is it sets the concept of due process of law and liberty back about a thousand years. This will be an international tribunal composed mostly of judges from foreign countries, including any member in good standing of the UN, Iraq, North Korea, Libya, Iran, they could all supply judges for this international criminal court who would have no respect whatsoever for our constitutional rights. Because consider this, the Seventh Amendment to the U.S. Constitution affirms a right to trial by jury. There will be no jury trials before this International Criminal Court. None at all. We will be judged by the foreigners, including from terrorist and communist states. When I talk to you a little bit more about what this bill really means, remember it's you or your neighbor or the person down the street that they're talking about treating in the manner that I'm describing. All right? Let's suppose that the lady in the front row in the black sweater is sitting at home one evening and there's a knock at the door and the INS comes and says, we're going to arrest you as a terrorist agent representative of a terrorist organization. And she says, first of all, well, how do I know that I represent a terrorist organization? And they'll say, because the President of the United States has determined which organizations are terrorist and which are not. And then she might say, well, what makes you think I'm their agent? And they'll say, because the Attorney General says that you are. And furthermore, there's no appeal of that determination. We say you are, therefore you are. Come with us, ma'am. And she says, well, just a minute, let, us, let me get my purse. The key element for ladies of your ID or the wallet if you're a man. And they say, no, ma'am, we don't have time for that. Off you go. She is then locked up in a detention facility. Her lawyer doesn't get a phone call. Unlike the Nazi bills, her family isn't notified. There is no bond. There is no hearing to release her. She sits there until the process is done. While she sits in this jail cell, a secret hearing is held in the judge's chambers. In camera is the term for it. Ex parte. That means one side only is represented. She has no lawyer present. Her lawyer doesn't know she's gone, let alone the hearing is taking place. A representative of the Department of Justice hands the judge a series of documents and says, this is why we want this lady out. She's an alien. Again, as I said, it could be a sovereign. It could even be a mistake if it turns out that they've transposed a name or pretending that she's an alien because, after all, she doesn't have the ability to even get a hold of her handbag to prove that she's not. 
All this is going on while she's locked up and perhaps her family has no idea where she is.